Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and the title of today's topic is The Why Did the Universe Do That Response um, Show Episode. Um, the idea behind this is like, our show is progressing. We're, we're moving from understanding, you know, that our will is not free, that everything is causal, and, you know, our will is also unconscious, to implementing and integrating this, um, this understanding. Because the idea is, that, you know, it's not enough to just know it. You know, in order to really benefit from understanding the free will is an illusion, you have to use it in your life. And because we've been conditioned for all of our life kind of to believe in free will, it's, it's going to take some reconditioning. So this is kind of like an exercise to help us do that. Okay, um, before I do that, I want to do what I usually do, you know, going over why I'm doing this show and also a brief definition of free will and some brief refutations, but I'm going to try to, you know, make them much briefer than in the past because I really do want to get to the topic. And if we have time at the end, we can go over, you know, because th the basic explanation of why free will is impossible is still very important. You know, you can't hear it enough, really. Okay, um, so the reason I'm doing this show is because, you know, well, I mean, like, the entire world is completely deluded about the first fact of human activity, which is that it's not up to us, it's up to the universe or the causal past or our unconscious. And, and it's not just that it's, like, completely opposite, it's just like it creates so many problems. The free will belief creates blame and creates guilt. Without it, you know, there would be no personal blame or guilt. I mean, it'd, it'd be so much more of a happy world. You know, we wouldn't be at each other as much. We would be cooperating instead of competing, and it'd be very good. Okay, now the defini uh, definition of free will is basically that um, we can do whatever we want, regardless of anything. You know, um, nothing is compelling us to do anything. The, the, the issue is that of control. You know, so um, naturally the reality is that um, that's not possible. We can't think whatever we want, you know, naturally if we wanted to feel whatever we want, everybody would be blissed out every, every moment of every day. And so like there are two basic um, explanations of why free will is impossible. Okay, the first is that everything has a cause. So if every one of our decisions or thoughts has a cause, and every one of the causes of our decisions or thoughts has a cause, and there is a cause to that cause, and there is a cause to that cause, and ca causes are always going back in time, then you can see how the ensuing causal regression, going back, cause and effect in time, leads to before we were born, before the planet was created. And so that what, what's happening is that the past is actually what's determining what's happening in the present and what will eventually happen in the future. Okay, that's the causal explanation. And, you know, the idea that, that um, randomness could allow for free will doesn't make sense because really there is no such thing as randomness because randomness literally would mean that things are not caused and that's just incoherent. Um, okay, and the second um, major reason why um, free will is impossible is because all of the data upon which we base decisions, except maybe the, the incoming perceptions from the um, environment, except I think they're perceived also from the unconscious, any, any also. In other words, like if I'm looking at across the stage, I'm conscious of that, but my, my unconscious is actually what's looking and making my, me aware through my consciousness. So it's all unconscious. And so the idea is if, if everything we base our decision is in our unconscious, and by definition, uh, by experience, um, we call the unconscious the unconscious because we're not aware of it in real time. I mean, we know ex it exists through various ways, but um, if, if both the data, if the data is in the unconscious, the processing of that data, in other words, the decision making has to be at the level of the unconscious. Because again, the conscious mind doesn't have access to the multitude of kinds of considerations, moral, hedonic, you know, uh, what we learned, our genetic aspects. All right, so I think um, that's good for now. All right, now let's, let's get on to the topic. Okay, so yeah, in, in order to, um, to overcome the belief of free will, the first part is to understand that it's a, uh, an illusion, a myth. It's, it's a mistaken conclusion and an erroneous deduction. 
and uh, but again, that's not enough. Um, so, what? Whenever we basically the I, the idea that we have a free will, this this habit that we have, this custom, it's ingrained. It is a habit. You know, it's a hab habitual way of perceiving ourselves and others and the world. And um, with any habit, it's going to take effort to undo it. You know, think of habits you've had in the past, whether it's you know eating, drinking, um, overwork, not working enough, whatever. We, we get into these habits and it does take effort to undo them, to learn new habits. So, all right, so like what I'm proposing is something that I've experimented with before when I was doing my work on happiness um, in the sense that like in, in the process of becoming happier, I would kind of like... Um, kind of like recite mantras, like running mantras and all, and it worked. But all right, the idea behind this is that um, anytime, anytime another person, other people, or we do something that we think is wrong, think shouldn't have been, been done, think, you know, might be hurtful or whatever, um, that at the moment we catch ourselves noticing that, we can silently say to ourselves, why did the universe do that? Okay, so in other words, like, that statement, when we say that to ourselves, we immediately remind ourselves, wait a minute, that person, I, you know, whoever's doing whatever we think um, is wrong, doesn't have a free will. So then what we're doing is like, we're shifting our, our focus very, very intelligently, you know, from, you know, who the the um the wrong the you know the alleged wrong whatever is being done by which i mean it's kind of obvious i mean like if it's somebody else or ourselves we kind of know that it's like you know it doesn't really make that much sense to dwell on that so much you know once we know it so like the consideration is why you know why are we doing that and naturally if we don't have a free will it's the universe you know we are compelled by the causal past to um to do things wrong and and that's that's a great way of understanding why we don't have a free will if we had free wills we would never do anything wrong you know at least morally um so all right i want to talk about where i got this idea this i personally got this idea also from um there's a kind of a mantra in meditation also that's called i am that and it's a similar kind of a practice in other words like with some i think this may be buddhist i'm not sure maybe hindu but the way um, this is used is whenever you would see anything, like if I see that table, I'm saying to myself silently, I am that. If I hear myself talking, I, I'm saying I am that. If I hear some music, I am that. You know, whatever we perceive, we would say I am that. And that, you know, the purpose of that is really to kind of like feel connected to everything, you know, because we really are one, you know, we're not like truly individual autonomous organisms you know the, the the universe is one and it's 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 one interactive one so um but anyway that's that's where i got this idea and so like that's you know i um i haven't i haven't begun to um to practice with this too much yet but i want to get it out there um also i think to, to encourage me to, to practice it more although you know um so let's say somebody does something that we consider wrong, okay? Um, and we, we say to ourselves silently, you know, why did the universe do that, okay? Um, that, question, that question forms the essence of, of what we should be um, addressing. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't really matter what kind of wrong it is. Sometimes, like... Now, I have to say as an aside, as a caveat, that you can't really, you know, sometimes we or somebody does something wrong or potentially harmful or hurtful, and, you know, there may not be time to, to like, philosophize on the why, you know. There, it may just require direct response, whatever, you know. But, but it's, the idea is, like, when we do have time, when it's kind of, like, no, not so urgent, whenever we, we begin to question, well, why did the universe do that? Then um, what happens is, in my experience, because I have tried this, you know, I've been trying this over the last month especially, um, 
in my experience, the, uh, the blame and the aggression toward the person or toward myself kind of it evaporates. It basically, you know, there's, there's, no, there's not a reason for it. Because again, I'm telling my, myself, it's, it's the universe that did that. And because of my prior knowledge of the, the nature of human will, you know, I, I understand that. When I say that to myself, my mind agrees. And um, it's just a much more pleasant response. It's like, um, one of the things I've found is, yeah, in addition to, to kind of focusing one on the essence of what should be considered, you know, as a response to whatever, it also focuses us away from the negative emotions uh, because because a lot of times you know for example if, if it's me if it if it's we who do something wrong then um we're going to feel guilt you know we're going to feel guilt and um and that's not a pleasant emotion if somebody else does somebody something wrong we're going to feel anger aggression um hostility you know we're going to feel adversarial so like the first thing that happens when, when I, you know, say this to myself, why did the universe do that? You know, um, that emotion also evaporates. You know, it's like it shifts the attention of the mind. And, you know, the mind can only focus on one thing at a time pretty much. So, like, you know, if you're actively moving it away from, from the emotional experience by something that makes sense, in other words, like, it doesn't make sense to be emotionally angry with someone or oneself if we're not responsible for what was being done. So like, you know, once you provide a rationale for um, not feeling that emotion, then that emotion just naturally um, evaporates, it, you know, vanishes. Okay. Um, now again, this, this really should lead to um, more direct responses to whatever, more pleasant responses, more intelligent responses. And, you know, I could speculate in terms of like how this would, um, work out societally and, you know, as we progress into the future. But, you know, I think at, at this point, let's just stay with, with the, um, the practice, I think. Because we, we may have actually, we've got like about 15 minutes left. We, um, we may have exhausted this already. Um, well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop other exercises to, um, to integrate this, this, this understanding of human will. Because I, you know, um, I might as well talk about this. Yeah, I mean, I've been working with this. Uh, this show has been um, being broadcast for about a year now. I think we started January 6, 2011. And, you know, I just published my book, Exploring Illusion of Free Will. And I've got my meetup in Manhattan going since April of 2010, which is an awesome group. I mean, you know, we just get together like once a month, first uh, Saturday of each month in Manhattan, the... Uh, the Sony Plaza, Madison Avenue, and we just talk about this. I mean, it's great. We, we talk about, like, not just um, why free will is an illusion, but, but what it means to our world. But anyway, like, so, um, so I'm doing all this stuff, and, and naturally, you know, and if I'm creating these shows, and I'm, you know, you know basically the book was the trans a transcription of the first 18 episodes of this show, so, you know, while I'm, while I'm doing all that, you know, this, this topic, this matter is in my mind a lot. And so regardless of the, the direct exercises I may, you know, rely on to strengthen my understanding of the universal and causal nature of human will, um, just in the immersion that I've had in this topic over the last uh, almost two years now has really... Um, made a difference. I mean, um, I will certainly still get angry at other people and myself uh, for whatever, but, you know, I'm getting so much better at, at getting, at, at, at reminding myself more quickly, wait a minute, you know, it doesn't make sense to be angry at another person, a group of people or myself or whatever, if, it, uh, if they're not responsible. And in my experience, let me tell you, um, it's powerful. It's powerful because, like, um, in, in one instance, for example, let's say, you know, it's a good friend. You know, they do something wrong, and you don't want to, to, to have that wrong be a barrier in the friendship. So, um, so to the extent that you don't hold the person accountable, then um, 
then it makes it so much easier. It makes, it makes accepting everything so much easier. Sometimes, um, sometimes you still have to kind of like engage in the conventional way of, of addressing, you know, others and, and oneself and all. In other words, well, I think, you know, this is kind of like the response. Sometimes um, we may need to kind of like, kind of like act as if the other person needs to be directly responded to or addressed. And, and you know, that's not really, that's not really attributing a free will to the person. It's really a, an understanding or a recognition that the universe has used that person as a conduit or a vehicle for its will. And that sometimes, like, the necessary response is through that person. Um, so in other words, like, we could, we could ask, why did the universe do that? But, um, you know, I think perhaps a more precise um, statement, a bit longer, I'm not sure, um, could work in this, of course. Why did the universe make that person do that? Why did the universe make me do that? Make that group do that? And um, it just like, it makes everything um, smoother. It just, it, it, um, things flow so much better. Okay, um, we've got about 11 minutes. Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to explaining why free will is impossible because you know you can't hear this too much <laughs> because because uh, yeah because I you know it's it's not um you know it's not something we think about you know so the more we think about it the more we're gonna like the the, the easier we'll understand it okay let's go back to the um the first basic um reason why free will is impossible okay um and it's causality cause and effect and this time, let's not apply it to, um, well, this time, let's, let's use the, the universe as the cause, okay? Because that's when, when we're talking about causality, it's the universe that's causing everything. And when I mean, when I say universe, I mean the entire universe, you know, not just this galaxy or, you know, it's everything. And um, so what happens? And this, this relates, incidentally, not just to every one of our decisions, it also relates to everything that happens. Every, I mean everything, every particle that moves, every sound that, that you know, occurs, whatever. And what happens is like, what reality is, is the universe, the matter in the universe, mass, energy, call it what you will, moving through space in time, okay? And so, like, and the universe does this. In other words, like, the universe at this moment in time, you know, the present moment in time, is determining, is completely determining, you know, completely, um, with no other influence possible, the universe at the subsequent moment, okay? And then the universe at that subsequent moment would determine the universe at the next moment. Because, you, you, I mean, I hope you can see the logic of that. You know, you've got one universe and then you've got time. Okay, Time goes from, from the past to the present to the forward. And everything moves from past to present to forward. Everything evolves. Time is really, again, matter or mass energy moving through this space, through the space of the universe. So, all right, so... So now what, what we have is um, anytime we make a decision, anytime we have a thought, we have a feeling, um, those experiences are not separate from either the rest of the universe or this comprehensive general evolution of the universe from state to state. In other words, if if everything happening at this moment was the direct and complete result of the state of the universe at the previous moment, then obviously every decision that we make at the present moment is going to be the direct result of the universe at the, at the previous moment. That's, and naturally, you know, you have that, that causality that, that goes back. And that's a cool way to... 
it's kind of a cool way to understand it. it's like you know because then you know it leads to um it leads to certain well certain barriers in understanding for example you, you'll say to yourself fine okay um so we have this chain of cause and effect and every one of our decisions has a cause which has a cause which has a cause and this you know but then some people say well, all right fine but like where does it begin you know because some because like to the extent that we can understand we can only go as far back as the Big Bang, which is like 13.7 billion years. But philosophically, logically, you would think that, well, you know, there must have been something before the Big Bang. How could something come from nothing? Um, and, but see, the, the, the thing with this is like, don't get sidetracked or, or, um, or confused about this. Like, it doesn't matter whether there was or is a beginning to everything for free will to be impossible because of this universal progression of, of the, you know, this causal progression of the universe from moment to moment. All that matters is that, you know, from that Big Bang, everything is causal. In other words, it, it's just simply inconsequential what happened before the Big Bang because at the Big Bang, and, and certainly, I mean, like, you know, the last... Even take the last hundred years. You don't have to go back to, to you know to the Big Bang or when the planet was created. If if the state of the universe a hundred years ago, two hundred years, and you include everybody, um, if the state of the universe two hundred years ago is completely determining everything that's happening now, then then naturally it's determining every decision that every one of us makes now. You know you know this cause and effecting. All right. I think you understand. And again, I'm going to explain it more because it, it um, you know, um, to many people, because we have been so thoroughly conditioned to um, to hold this this belief that we have free will. Then again, it, it's going to take um, time to to overcome it. Okay. Now we've got about five minutes. I want to go. Oh, now time for commercial. Okay. <laughs> um, every Wednesday night. Um, uh, on Manhattan um, cable TV, like basically, um, I, I do this other show. It's called Myth of Free Will, Myth Free Will. We're changing the name because, like, we we needed to fit in the TV guy so people can see it when they're scrolling through, or whatever. And so we've been doing this for like half a year already, um, two quarters, and um, and it's a great show because it's in Manhattan. I mean, anybody who, who lives in Manhattan gets cable, can you know see it through the TV. But if you don't live in Manhattan, you just log on to the Manhattan Neighborhood Network website, you know, on the internet, and they stream, you know, our, our program. You know, and the thing is, um, it's a live show. It's a live debate show. So basically, the messenger, who's a very good friend of mine and who's producing this show, he lives in Manhattan. He and I host it. And we take calls. There's like two phone numbers that uh, that um, you know our viewers can call with, and and we just talk about this. And and this is good because like you know, we're reaching through that show people who um, who probably otherwise would never be aware of this question because like you know I went through you know my whole college experience. I don't think I ever you know had a class. Where um, where this topic was 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 dealt with in, in, in any depth. I mean, like perhaps in a, in a psychology course or something. But um, but yeah, this is like you know. So that's the value of this show, the you know, myth free will, and you know, the universe willing, God willing, whatever. Because it's not up to us. It's not up to Manhattan Neighborhood Network or whatever. But if we're lucky, um, starting next quarter. Um, which is I don't know about ten weeks away or so or something like that. We uh, we want to like expand it to an hour. So anyway, that that's coming. But because uh, I'm gonna you know because like half an hour just flies by for this show. You know for this show it's pretty cool. But all right. Um, so again, that's Myth Free Will every Wednesday, 11 p.m. Um, on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. It's the lifestyle lifestyle channel, channel two, and Time Warner Cable channel 56 in Manhattan. Okay. So I've got about two minutes, two and a half minutes left. I want to just like, um, yeah, I want to talk about the unconscious. Um, do I want to, let's see. Yeah, because like this, you know, the basic 
historical explanation of why free will is impossible has always been causality. You know, because it's so simple. If everything has a cause, then free will is impossible. That's, you know, it's like 2 plus 2 equals 4. But, um, but because, because we're hedonic creatures and because, you know, we've been conditioned um, as we have, you know, to some people that, you know, they can understand that, they can understand logically that, that free will is impossible because of that, but they don't want to, um, but still, you know, they, they, they don't fully understand it. They don't fully understand, you know, how illogical free will. So th this explanation, which I'll get <laughs> about a minute and 40 seconds, is basically about how the unconscious makes free will impossible. Um, I talked about it a little earlier, and yeah, we're not going to have that much time to do this now, but think about this. This is so important because this is big. Um, when we make any decision, we're not just considering it on one factor. We're considering it on many factors. Um, is it the right thing to do? Will it lead to greater pleasure in the future? Um, is it something that makes sense? You know, did, because we have these imperatives like the hedonic imperative. Does it, will it feel good? The moral imperative. Is it right? The r rational imperative. Does it make sense? And these things, and, and then we have to draw on on our memories to do this and the idea here is that like if all this stuff is in the unconscious and by definition we can't access we we're not even aware that the unconscious is there then clearly obviously it's the unconscious it's our unconscious that's actually making every decision now naturally if you want to invoke causality you can with this because basically basically you can say it's the state of the universe the moment the unconscious you know, made whatever decision it made that's, you know, that's causal explanation. But the, the great thing about this unconscious explanation of why free will is impossible is because it doesn't rely on causality. Simply because, like, you know, we're not aware of the unconscious, free will is impossible. All right, that is all I have time for today. Thanks for watching. Um, we're going to go into this, like, this is show number 48. So, but we're going to keep doing this. Thanks.